Mans. This is the legendary circuit of Le Mans. We are here ahead of round number seven of the Goodyear FIA European Truck Racing Championship. Everybody knows this name, the local hero Tio KV. Everyone just used the 100% renewable HVO biofuel, of course Tio KV as well. But the pressure is on you Tio, isn't it? This weekend we'll have uh, a little pressure, uh, I can say, because uh, yeah, it's my home race and, um, and uh, all the, the French crew is there. And I'm the only driver, the French driver in Europe, so yeah, it will be interesting, I think. Uh, I'm really looking forward and I can't wait, can't wait to start tomorrow. So of course it's going to be a tough battle in between those three top of the league and the promoters cup, Shane Brereton, and Theo Calvi and of course Jamie Anderson, yes? They're going to need these big guys here. Uh, the, 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 the competition is really hard uh, between the, the, the three guys in front. I mean, uh, with Jamie and uh, Shane, it's, it's like really close. Uh, each race, are, we are like so so close, and it's it's really big battles. But uh, yeah, I, I I will do my best to to win the the promoter's cup of course this year. So please tune in six live events this weekend. The paddock is ready. You are ready too? Race 1 of the weekend and race 25 of the 2022 Goodyear FIA European Truck Racing Championship got underway either side of the championship trophy. A trophy that Norbert Kish most certainly had his eyes on. But if Jochen Hahn could score just nine points on Saturday during races 1 and 2, he could take the title fight at least to Sunday and maybe then Harama. It was a great start by Sasha Lenz from the front row, who was down the inside of Norbert Kish, but going into the Dunlop chicane, it would be Norby that would hold on to the advantage and go on to lead, as he so often does in these first races. Antonio Albertetti was trying to hold off Jochen Hahn and Adam Latchko just behind, but they weren't the main casualty on the opening lap. Andre Kurzim went straight on at the long right-hander at the bottom of the hill and had a bit of a trip through the gravel. He and Steffi Halm having a bit of a poor start in their two Ivecos. Stefan Fast nearly came to strife as well, but everybody made it cleanly round the first lap. Only problem being losing a couple of places here and there. It was instantly looking good for Norbert Kish, though, as he went on to set fastest lap after fastest lap. A bit of contact further down between Heinrich Clementecke and Stefan Fass certainly made sure that there was plenty of entertainment in the last sector of the lap. Promoters' Cup Championship rivals Theo Calve and Jamie Anderson soon got to work. Jamie hadn't had the qualifying session that he would have wanted, but started gaining places early on in the race and hounding the Frenchman, who was racing this weekend on home soil in front of a massive crowd at the Bugatti circuit. His teammate Adam Latchko was chasing Jochen Hahn, who was looking to cling on to whatever title hopes were left. Eventually, Theo had to give way to Jamie Anderson, but it was a nice, clean, fair fight between the two of them and good respect after previous contact earlier in the season. Speaking of previous contact, Heinrich Clement Hecker and Stefan Fass were getting close together once again, this time not smacking into each other and having a good old battle further down, with British racing driver John Newell joining them in his first weekend in the championship. Steffi Halm was struggling with a puncture and some damage after early contact in the race, and she was starting to drop further and further back. Heinrich Clement Hecker making many advances until one big shove in the side, shot here from on board with Stefan Fass, was enough to put Steffi out of the race, and a very disgruntled driver she was. She eventually brought it back to the pit lane, but her first race was over. She would have to try and recoup points over the rest of the weekend, but one man that didn't need to do that 
was Norbert Kirsch. He took the first race victory of the weekend and set himself up nicely to try and take the title this weekend. A big round of applause from everybody on the pit wall, included a very big congratulations to Sasha Lenz for second place and Antonio Albertetti for another podium, his 277th in the championship. A figure that even he was surprised to hear when I spoke to him in the evening. But Norbert Kish back on top once again. Another solid win and more solid points. How was the race for you? You said uh, the first chicane is always interesting. Yeah. yeah, just like now as well. The start was really tight. We go side by side with Sasha. And up the hill on the right, Sasha is a little bit, you know, because he's on the inside, he was a little bit front again. But then the next turn is for me and that's why the pole position is on the left. And yeah, you know, I could break a little bit later, go in fast in the chicane and then, yeah, you know, make it out in front. So yeah, it was good. And then, you know, try to concentrate, hitting my marks, do my pace I can and, you know, build a little bit of a gap. Um, and it worked, you know, so really happy. Another excellent victory for Norbert Kish. And the Hungarian flag flew above the Le Mans podium, the very famous Le Mans podium with Sasha Lenz and Antonio Albertetti joining him. Jochen Hahn may have done enough to take the title fight to at least Sunday, but Norbert was certainly looking in a good mood and in fantastic form ahead of the second race of the weekend. He takes the win by nearly seven seconds over Sasha Lenz with Antonio Albertetti completing the podium. Jochen Hahn, Adam Lachko, Jamie Anderson and Theo Calve behind those two battling for the Promoters' Cup lead. Andre Curzin was eighth ahead of Shane Brereton in ninth. Stefan Fast rounds out the top ten while Rodriguez, Newell, Hecker and Halm round out the entire field. André Kursum, uh, lucky pole setter. <laughs> Aber am Ende ist es doch egal, wie man hierher gekommen ist, oder? Finally, it is, doesn't matter how to get to the pole, isn't it? Yes, uh, Rodis get the penalty, a 10 second penalty. You now we are on the eighth position, full position for the second race today. Yes, hopefully we can get a nice podium today, and yes, we will see. There was a lot riding on the front row. Andre Kurzim looking for a podium and a nice clean race in his Don't Touch Racing Iveco. And also Theo Calve alongside him, the young Frenchman on home soil looking for an outright race victory, which would be his second in the championship. He had his teammate Adam Lachko behind him. And alongside him as well was Jamie Anderson. There was a big shuffle and contact at the start of the race with Shane Burton and Stefan Fass making contact right to left. But it was Theo Calve at the very front that got a really good start and managed to pull away from Andre Kurzim and hold the lead into the first chicane. Further back though, there was contact between Brereton and Sasha Lenz, which threw him into the middle of the road. And in a very scary moment, everybody held their breath and prayed they didn't make contact. Luckily, he didn't hit anybody, but everyone else was hitting everyone else. Antonio Albertetti and Adam Lachko very lucky not to get collected by Steffi Halm, but we had a number of drivers drop down the order, but miraculously, everyone carried on. There was no safety truck, no even reason for a red flag. Theo Calve managed to stretch his legs early on in the race, though, and Jamie Anderson knew that in the Promoters' Cup it was important for him to chase him down. He wouldn't mind, though, if Andre Curzon finished in front of him because he was still second in the Promoters' Cup outright, Andre Curzon being a Titan-rated driver. Everybody watched on in absolute suspense as Jamie Anderson put it down the inside of Curzon with a bit of contact into the S-Bend near the end of the lap. Curzon gave as good as he got, though, and Norbert Kish was in the front row seat for what was a fantastic battle. More and more contact would eventually see Jamie getting through and Andre unfortunately would drop another position or two while taking the penalty markers with him. Stefan Fast was in the battle as well with Jochen Hahn who had to avoid the flying debris off the front of Jamie Anderson's machine. Nothing untoward though, just a bit of fiberglass flying off and it wouldn't cause too much harm to the trucks behind but you can never be too safe in motorsport. Theo Calve had opened up a bit of a lead, but it wasn't long before Jamie Anderson and Norbert Kish were all over the back of him. The racing was very close, but it was very fair as well. The two drivers had made contact a lot in the past after having a big old fight for the championship lead in the Promoters' Cup, but it was a great turn of events to see them so close together with very little contact and massive respect between not just the two of them, but the three of them as well, as Norby held his patience. 
wasn't without trying that Norbert Kish could not get through. He was throwing absolutely everything at Jamie Anderson throughout the entire race, but Jamie put the truck exactly where he needed to, much like Teo Calve did as well. It was another amazing defensive drive from Teo, as we've seen him do so many times before. Even onto the final couple of laps, Norby was managing to get his nose in front on corner entry, but on the exit, Jamie just had it hooked up and could not do anything else to hold Norbert back. It carried on corner after corner, Norby trying his usual tactic of setting a manoeuvre up a few corners before, and even into the final few laps of the race and the final few corners of the race, it was still going on, Jamie having to even cut the chicane at points to avoid contact and a potential incident. This all, of course, helped out Teo Calve. The Frenchman was looking to take his second ever victory in the Goodyear FIA European Truck Racing Championship, and after a mistake by Jamie Anderson at the final corner, which let Norbert Kish through, he had done it. Teo Calve wins at Le Mans in front of a home crowd for Bagheera ZM Racing, and everybody went absolutely bonkers. Wonderful drifting demonstration afterwards as well. All of the emotion pouring out for Teo Calve, but a very well-deserved victory, and it meant a lot to him, the team, and the fans as well. The young star had really proven himself on the circuit once again. As he climbed down and celebrated with his father and the team, it was down to Christina to try and capture the emotion. <laughs> I have no words. It's just incredible, all the, all the crew, all, everything, it's, uh, it's, it's amazing. I'm so happy I did the good race, I think. I managed it so hard with, with I, I was struggling a little bit, but uh, I kept the head up and yeah, I won this. I'm so happy. <laughs> Champagne flies for Teo Calve as he takes his second ever win in the European Truck Racing Championship. Norbert Kish finishes in second for more solid points ahead of Jamie Anderson, and it's Jochen Hahn and Adam Latchko completing the top five. Four German drivers next up in Andre Kersim, Sasha Lenz, Stefan Faas, Steffi Halm, and then Jose Rodriguez ahead of Shane Brayton, Heinrich Clemens Hecker, John Newell, and Antonio Albacete out the race with damage. As day would turn to night though, the good times would continue to roll. An incredible array of show trucks made their way around the circuit on the Saturday night, showing off absolutely everything they had to the crowd and the fans and the organizers alike. There were smiles all round and beautiful shucks on show with some incredible fireworks as well to round out the evening. A fantastic display of them on the infield at the Ford Chicane at the end of the lap as we all got ready to do it all again on Sunday. Race three would get underway with the front row being the top two drivers in the championship. Norbert Kish could basically win the championship with this race so long as he outscored Jochen Hahn at all. No matter how many points were in it, as long as he finished ahead of Jochen, he would be champion. It was a very strange start though. He went to get going a bit early, slammed on the brakes and held himself up massively, meaning Jochen was gifted the race lead and it was now his race to lose. Jamie Anderson had qualified fourth on the grid after an amazing session and made his way up to third straight off the bat ahead of Sasha Lenz. Coming into the first chicane, there was slightly less shenanigans than the first time round, but a big lockup by Jose Rodriguez threw a number of trucks into each other. Everybody would carry on, and even after a bit of contact between Steffi Helm, Shane Brayton and Teo Calve, the field would make their way down to the hairpin. It was there that John Newell slammed on the brakes, locked up, hit the back of Stefan Fass, and then Heinrich Clemens Hecker had to take avoiding action. John would ultimately continue after checking the truck over one lap later in the pits, but all was good and he would complete the race one lap down. Jochen Hahn then launched an amazing defensive effort, trying to hold off Norbert Kish as he went hunting the championship title, and with one hand already on the trophy, he was definitely confident that he was going to take it home today. 
It was not long later, though, where Norbert launched the attack. Still with one hand on the wheel, driving around the outside of Jochen, he set himself up for a good run into the next couple of corners and was trying to eye up where the weaknesses lay with the Germans' defence. And eventually, after going down the inside, shot here by one of our judicial review cameras by Sensata Smart Witness, we saw Norby take the race lead and a championship winning position. Jamie Anderson was holding firm in third place ahead of Adam Lachko, but he just had a fantastic front row seat for this battle. It would be ten championships between the two of them if it carried on the way it was, but Jochen was certainly going to try hard to make sure it remained nine, at least for now. Norbert then started opening up a gap while the battles began behind as Lachko started closing in on Jamie Anderson. He wanted an overall podium to add to his tally for the season. Norby was supreme though and disappeared off up the road doing what he normally does in the championship and showing everyone exactly what the pace can be like. There was a bit of a queue forming behind Jamie Anderson though, Antonio Albertetti now joining in the fight, but there were no serious moves being made at this point, everybody just waiting for things to unravel. Norby's lead would soon surpass seven seconds and everybody was just holding their breath and holding back the applause waiting to crown a new champion. As he came round the final corner, he finally knew he'd done it. Some amazing drifting as ever, but Norbert Kish was the 2022 Goodyear FIA European Truck Racing Champion, his fourth title and his second on the bounce. An incredibly impressive feat, putting him the third all-time championship winner with four. Not many now behind Jochen Hahn. You did it again. Congratulations. We, we did it again, you know. With those guys there, you know, as uh, the job, you know, uh, what the team did, you know, it's, it's awesome, you know. They, they're making my job easy, you know. <laughs> easy. Thank you very much. Thank you. And, um, yeah, Ravis Racing did an amazing job. You know, such a great machine. Every circuit, you know, it works. And uh, we can, we, we could be faster. And, yeah. It's, I just wish I didn't make mistakes like what I've done at the start today. Um, but yeah, still um, I could come back and yeah, take the championship with a victory. Really happy, really thankful for the team, for Avis Racing and everybody involved. And uh, our owner, um, Mr. Balint Ravis, for the continued support and for the whole Ravis family. It's, you know, it's just great to be here in these colors. And uh, yeah, really happy about the championship. Four titles now for Norbert Kish, and he was looking absolutely unstoppable. Another amazing drive in the first race of the day, and it was all smiles in the gorgeous sunshine at Le Mans. The eventual race winning gap was over eight and a half seconds back to Jochen Hahn, with Jamie Anderson grabbing an overall podium for the first time in the first race of the day. Adam Lachko was fourth ahead of Sasha Lenz in fifth, and everybody else behind them was just wondering what they could do to catch Norby, who could now take the gloves off well and truly in the last race of the weekend. At TOKW. We're still here at France, the final race of this weekend, a good chance for you to get to podium again. How excited are you ahead of this last race here at your home soil? Yeah, like you said, it's the last one here in France uh, for the year. So I will, I will uh, try my best. Of course, I will try to do like yesterday. I'm, I'm super excited for this race. Uh, yesterday was amazing and I hope uh, today will be the same. A hopeful Teo Calve there, hoping to do the double in front of his home crowd, but it was his Promoters Cup rival Shane Brayton alongside him on pole position. Shane had been having a lot of engine issues throughout the season which had held him back and it was not a very welcome sight for British fans to see Shane struggling compared to how well he did last year on the way to win the Promoters Cup. As the race got underway, there was a lot of tension in the air and everybody just willing to see the British driver finally have some luck his way, but it was conflicting opinions as the Frenchman Theo Calve alongside him wanted to definitely do two from two reverse grid front rows. 
There's plenty of space left between the pair of them going into the chicane and Shane would hold on to his lead early on. A much tidier start from the trucks behind this time as well. Sasha Lenz was looking very ominous straight off the bat as he tried to attack Teo Calve, but the Frenchman held second while everybody else was trying to grab fourth position. Jamie Anderson and Adam Latchko leaning on each other, let's just say a little bit. Sasha Lenz made a mistake going into Garage Vert at one point with Antonio Albatetti trying to take advantage and get his second podium of the weekend, but the two had to fight hard as they have often done in the past. Despite the engine issues and there being penalty markers absolutely everywhere, Shane Brereton managed to still hold on to his lead and actually begin to extend the gap. Teo Calve having to fight off many trucks behind him, the whole field at one point almost being one massive train. The fans cheering on Jose Rodriguez in the stand would certainly inspire a number of other drivers as well. Antonio Albatetti here with Adam Lachko side by side as Norbert Kish very casually started to stroll his way through the field once again. Now we've seen Teo Calve defend immensely before and this was going to be one of his biggest tests of the season. Sasha Lenz was absolutely crawling all over the back of the Freightliner but somehow Teo managed to hold him off corner after corner, all the time helping Shane Brereton maintain his lead. Of course that wasn't Teo's intention, he wanted to go for the race win himself but with everything going on behind him I imagine it was hard to look forward rather than looking in his mirrors. Teammates Norbert Kirsch and Antonio Albatetti were close to wrapping up the team's championship, but that didn't stop them battling amongst themselves ahead of Anderson, Lachko and Hahn. It was Jochen and his teammate Steffi Halm that were trying to take the team's championship away from Norby and from Antonio, but eventually it would not be done, and the two of them, as Ravesh and T-Sport, would be crowned team's champions if they finished where they were. Somehow, still, Teo Calve managed to hold second place. It became a bit of a marvel by the time that the race had finished, but the Frenchman was just proving to everyone exactly how potent he could be. When you put him near the front of a grid, he certainly stays there. A little bit further behind, Jamie Anderson and Lachko had a bit of contact, which would eventually be resolved in the positions being switched back after the race. But on the cameras was an amazing fight once again, with Norbert Kish pressuring Sasha Lenz, who in turn was pressuring Teo Calve. The win went the way of Shane Brereton though and Teo held on to second with Sasha Lenz third and newly crowned champion Norbert Kish in fourth position. It was a nail-biting conclusion but excellent fun all the same and great clean racing from the championship. But once more Shane Brereton was back on top and it was exactly what he and the team had needed after a very challenging campaign thus far. The big purple Apollo tyres TOR truck racing machine had not been on the podium for quite a while and Shane was a very happy man. How glad and relieved are you after this race win? Yeah, it was brilliant. We still got the problem, but um, <laughs> because I was in front, I was able to control it and, and drive a bit different. Um, track was good. Um, I have a problem with the tyres burning out, so because I could control it, I could come out the corner steady, and the truck stayed good to the end. Tio was very gentlemanly on the start. He, he didn't do a dive at the inside, followed me, and then I saw the fight behind. I thought, I can't believe me luck. And as I was coming down the straight, I was looking at the big TV screen, and I could see it going on. I thought, just steady up, and we'll be all right. And be all right, they certainly would. Shane Brereton takes the third win of his career in the Goodyear FIA European Truck Racing Championship and shares the Promoters' Cup podium with Teo Calve and his countryman, Jamie Anderson. It was a very welcome result for the team and Shane was certainly very pleased indeed. Four and a half seconds at the flag ahead of Teo Calve and Sasha Lenz with Norbert Kish and Antonio Albatetti rounding out the top ten. Everyone else piled in behind them and it was an amazing display of respect and patience from just about everybody. The championship, though, went the way of Norbert Kish. A massive advantage now means that he's the 2022 champion ahead of Jochen Hahn, but he and Sasha Lenz and potentially Adam Lachko could take the fight to the end. Teo Calve and Jamie Anderson would certainly do that as well. Shane Brereton now just missing out on a chance to win the Promoters' Cup this season. But that's all from a wonderful weekend in Le Mans. Thank you very much for joining us, and we'll see you on the 1st and 2nd of October as we head to the season finale at Harama.